I think we can agree it's been a really tough time in the world. I don't need to talk about that too much. You all know what I mean. Uh, personally, it got me quite down throughout the whole year. I haven't made any videos like this in a while, um, but I'm bringing back my PILS videos. PILS is an acronym. It's people I like lots. I love to try and comb the internet and find some wholesome feel-good content that makes me feel good and then bring it out for you guys to see as well so that you can in turn feel good. The pills, they have medicine for the soul and I'm sharing my pills with you. I was very fortunate that the, the YouTube algorithm gods smiled upon me the other day and they showed me this video which was a Xenoblade unboxing video by the most unlikely of people. <laughs> it was a I don't want to guess an age, I'm just going to say it was a lovely elderly woman um, opening up a Xenoblade box. And I put it in my watch later list, I said I'll, I'll check that out at some point. Uh, and I did that yesterday, and I just got to say, it was probably the most heartwarming video I've ever seen. I very rarely will put a 30 minute video in my watch list of an unboxing or a video game review and watch the whole thing. Especially in this day and age where there's so much content, but I sat there and I absorbed everything. Everything in that video was amazing. What am I talking about, you might be asking? Well, it's a channel called I'm Food for Dogs. Hello everyone, I'm Food for Dogs. Hello everyone, I'm Food for Dogs. Which is a, just a quirky name, I love it. I don't know why it's that. I haven't explored the entire range of videos that she has to offer yet, but I'm sure I'll, my question will be answered in due course. Uh, it's a lovely lady from New Zealand. She's just the, like, the iconic grandma, you know? She's so nice, so calm, um, got a very calming voice and, and nature, a very friendly nature, um, and an incredible amount of information and, and knowledge about video games, especially the, the games that she likes, which is like Japanese RPGs, Harvest Moon. I'm sure that should be getting into Animal Crossing at some point in the near future if she hasn't already. I'm gonna read you her about page. I'm going to read most of it because some of these words I can't, I can't pronounce yet. If you feel like chilling out a bit from the rat race or just want to see what I'm playing, you're most welcome here at my place. Pets are welcome too. It's cozy. It's huggy. It's... Gimilch? Sorry, I, my ignorance, I don't know what that word is. It's food for dogs. I do unboxings with a twist. I like to talk about the back history, the graphics, the music of the game, giving some context to what comes out of the box. I also do PS4 gameplays, as well as some other platforms such as PS3, PS2, and even PS1. Occasionally, I tackle a My Impressions review of a game. I live on Vita Island and love to share everything Vita related. Recently, I added a Switch to my console stable, to ex <laughs> so expect to see a bit of Switch coverage too. And then she's got a Twitter. She only joined, she joined back in 2011. I assume she's done what I've done and just converted her usual viewing account for YouTube into a, a YouTube channel and then it blew up which is awesome because I can't think of anybody else on this platform at the moment who well there's, there's probably people I haven't come across anybody else on the platform who is more deserving of the recognition for the work she puts into this this is somebody who has a hobby you know they've, they've done their dash they've done their work stuff that retiring and they're looking for a hobby some people might do gardening some people might do plate collecting or or crocheting or quilt making hers is gaming which is just awesome it just shows me that you know the the idea that gaming is something for people in their 20s or 30s or, or lower than that is just ridiculous this is a universal platform that everybody's welcome in and it's so awesome to see that so much of the community are jumping on board and just saying that they love to see this too i can't quite put my finger on it but i think it's that you know, we're accepting that this is becoming a universal language in a way that we can all just put aside our differences and, and find something that we all enjoy together that, I mean, there's the whole controversy of Joe Rogan that video games are, you know, destructive and that sort of thing, but this is a positive thing, I think, in the, in the video game world. When I first came across her channel, it was really funny because the first thing I thought of was that ProZD um, skit about trying to get a viral video clip with getting your grandma to name all the Smash Bros. character. I'll, I'll play it now. I'm gonna ask my grandma to name all the characters in Smash Bros. Ultimate. Hope she doesn't get any wrong. Okay, Grandma, who's this? That's Mario. And who's this? That's his brother, Luigi. Okay, that's easy. But who's this? Lucina from Fire Emblem Awakening. How the f*** 
do you know that? Who doesn't know Lucina? Okay, but how about this guy? Shulk from Xenoblade Jesus Chronicles Christ. for the Nintendo Wii. God damn it, Grandma! I'm trying to go viral! There was Why also a 3DS How am I gonna link my SoundCloud, Grandma? And that's so spot on and so funny, but it turns out that ProdZD was one of the people behind giving this, this YouTube channel a platform. He tweeted out about her and she got really big. Finally, uh, recently, a Korean voice actor called Song... It's, it's Song Won. Won. Song Won. Cho. Song Won. And that's probably the closest I can get to pronouncing it correctly. A lovely person who's also a comedian and does incredibly funny skits and videos both on his Twitter account and on his YouTube channel. And the channel is called ProZD. And you may well know him and have come across him. He's very popular. And if I ever need a really good laugh, that's where I go. He noticed me and, and he posted a tweet about me. So once again, another wave of new um, subscribers um, came flooding in. So it's funny that that video he made like over a year ago has now become a real thing. You know how they say life imitates art? Art imitates memes. No, life imitates memes. There's, there's one I'm getting at there. You know, the meme is now reality. Food for Dogs is purely my hobby, me enjoying gaming and wanting to share it with other people. So I'm going to show you some of her videos and stuff just so you can get a feel or a vibe for the channel yourself. Um, there's two videos where she does like a tour of her gaming room and they're just fantastic. And I decided to be brave today and show you the other side of my gaming room. The side I usually refer to as the untidy side. So we'll just move around. And you can see uh, this is uh, the tidy view. And it's obviously a set of double doors. Obviously. Uh, wardrobe. Um, yeah, a, a pretty, you know, a largish but normal sized wardrobe in Lots this wardrobe. rather small room uh, right next to the door. Don't tease you us. You wouldn't this believe what's behind those doors. I love the build up to this. This is this is awesome. You wouldn't believe what's behind these doors. What's it gonna be? Let's have a look. Complete untidiness. Oh. <laughs> a messy gamers gaming station. It's just amazing her collection. She's got a PlayStation 3, she's got a, a PS Vita, she's got a shelf stacked with PlayStation Vita games that goes three deep. And this is this is very sad, but there we are. Uh, I have one cubicle with PS Vita games. They're stacked three rows deep. It's just unbelievable. And I'm so proud that there's somebody out there that's willing to put themselves out there because, you know, some people on the internet can't be that kind. And I'm really glad that she has put herself out there. And I'm really glad that she's gardening this attention from people. I showed my wife one of these videos last night just to say, look, I found this amazingly beautiful person who's doing this stuff and I showed her this video of her doing channel chat and about her new subscriber landslide and my wife said what kind of rotten fucking soul put a dislike on this video there were three dislikes there's four now which is horrible what's wrong with you people but it's just so like who who could do that to this wonderful old lady and dislike her videos what's wrong with you even though this this YouTuber is of a completely different generation, a completely different demographic to what you'd normally pin as a, a YouTuber or a gamer or that sort of thing. They have broken that bridge, you know. They, they have shown us that we don't all have to abide by the norms, you know, we don't have to follow the status quo. We can do what our heart wants us to do and go out there and, and enjoy it. It's not hurting anybody, it's enjoyable for yourself and other people like you doing it, then go and do it. And, you bring happiness to other people, which is the most important thing in this day and age. And that's not just food for dogs, that's food for thought. Did you like that one? I wrote that one in the shower last night while I was having a deep think, uh, deep shower thought there. 
I was quite proud of that one. And today I want to do a small quick unboxing of an Asian limited edition. And it's based on an anime called Is It Wrong to Try to Pick Up Girls in a Dungeon? It's a question that I don't feel um, qualified to answer. Food for Dogs is essentially a hardcore gamer. You might think of a hardcore gamer when you hear the phrase as someone like Ninja who does it professionally in, in esports. You might think of it as somebody as Henry Cam Kavanagh, if, 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 the Witcher, Superman, you know, building his computer with his big muscly arms. How the hell did he put that processor into the motherboard with his big muscly fingers without snapping a couple of pins? I don't know. I mean, they're hardcore gamers as well. I don't think you can limit hardcore gamers to just people who stay up drinking Monster all night and uh, playing PUBG. It is a range of people. And Food for Dogs, with her knowledge of, you know, the development of games, the soundtrack, um, the content within the games, uh, all of that stuff, she is classed as a hardcore gamer as well in my books. And that's just awesome. There was a bit of... I would say a bit of argy bargy behind the publishing scene. Um, most unusually, um, two companies had announced that they were going to do editions for this game. And uh, Play Asia was the first one out of the blocks. Um, I will put details about the second one in the description below uh, a british company called rice digital is putting out a more elaborate collector's edition so that's kind of the long and short of it there's a few other things i want to say first of all um i always like to think about what's next for for these channels or these people who are giving this wholesome content um, and, and i've got this sort of like this longing to see Food for Dogs, play a game that's a little bit outside of her area of comfort. And, you know, she talks about how she likes RPGs, JRPGs and that sort of thing. Um, she likes those farming simulators like Rune Factory or like Harvest Moon and that sort of thing. So that, that's great. But I'd love to see her give Red Dead Redemption 2 a go or Ghost of Tsushima or something like that. I think that a let's play of that uh, would be fantastic. I just want to see how she reacts to the moral choices that you have to make in those games and the slightly more mature content. Understand it's not her cup of tea. Completely understand uh, that that's probably not going to happen. But hey, just thought I'd chuck it out there. The second thing as well is if you ever do get Animal Crossing and if you ever want to uh, pop over to my island for a cup of tea, I'm going to put my friend code down here, Food for Dogs, if you ever see this. Um, you're more than welcome to we, we come water each other's flowers. It just was one kiwi to another. That would be awesome. And then the last thing I'd like to say to Food for Dogs, if you ever do see this, is I'd, I'd like to make you an offer. Um, I know that you're a collector. I know that you've only recently got onto the Nintendo Switch bandwagon and that you've already got Xenoblade Chronicles 2. I have it digitally. Uh, and that you've played through the DLC and all of that. But I have a feeling that you might not have been able to get the collector's edition because that came out um, back in 2017, around Christmas time. I'm pretty sure it sold out really fast. I thought at the time when it came out, do I get the collector's edition for Xenoblade Chronicles 2? I didn't have a Switch at the time, so it felt sort of kind of silly in a way, and I hesitated and I didn't buy the physical edition, the collector set. I got the collector's edition. I've played the game. I enjoy it quite a lot. But I've already used all of the other collector's edition items to the extent that I'd want to use them for. And I'd like to re-gift it to you if you want to accept it. With some caveats, of course. Um, so it includes the box, which unfortunately has a bit of a crease in it because of uh, reasons that will become obvious very soon. It includes the CD, which I haven't even opened because I pirate all my music. Um, government, don't listen to that last part. And then it comes with probably the thing you'll care about the most, which is the art book. Um, which I want to give to you so that you can read through it. It's got a lot of awesome stuff in it. I've, I've had to read through it. Beautiful artwork, and I'd like to gift that to you as well. I don't have the steel case book for the, ga the game card, uh, and that's because two years ago this house got broken into and, and all of my cases got stolen. Luckily all of my Switch games were with me, um, but all of the cases got stolen and, and taken away, which is like this bitter irony of that whole situation. They didn't get any games, which is awesome. But yeah, my 
email address is on my about page so just flick me an email let me know your address i'd love to send this stuff off to you um, love your content please keep it up and yeah keep entertaining us because we we need wholesome stuff like this in the world at the moment so thank you very much Redemption, honesty is a one-way gate to hell. So after ridiculing people on the internet, it feels so good to, to talk about what other people do, which is nice stuff. So uh, I'll probably do, do some more of these pills videos in the future just for my own mental well-being as well. Uh, but just a quick channel update. I'm going to pin this at the end of this video. Um, I'll probably do a Let's Play of Ghost of Tsushima at some point or some sort of tribute to that game because it is just so beautiful and amazing. Uh, I just want to express my love for that. And secondly, I've been working really hard on getting my next animated story time video out. It's coming along really well. I'm going to put a little teaser here for you guys to enjoy now. They got made uh, Doc Ranger, Department of Conservation Ranger of the Camping Ground. Um, and since then, you know, there'd been a lot of dodgy stories. People wouldn't really go out there for parties anymore. You'd hear stories about foreigners going there, starting bonfires on the beach, which technically you're not allowed to do. You're not allowed to start fires on the beach. Um, that's just silly, but people from Norway don't know that. <laughs> but they'd still, you know, they'd be down there enjoying a bonfire, they'd hear a loud smash. They'd go up to their car and find an axe in their windscreen. So hopefully that's done by the end of August. Maybe. I don't know. Drawing stuff's hard.